Hello everyone. Welcome. It's really good to see you. Well, metaphorically. I'm really glad you're here. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm sitting in my car. I do what I have to do. It's summertime in New Zealand. I know it's winter. Bless you. It's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, but here in New Zealand, it's the summer holidays. And I have all the children home from school. I've just put one down for a nap. It's very hot in the car, so I might have to open the window soon. Um, and I've got one watching some YouTube videos and another one that was trying to follow me out. And my husband's inside supervising. But I really, really wanted to get this done. I love doing Bible readings. I love doing it with you guys because it encourages me to read the Bible because I'm hopeless. I am really bad at having quiet times. But I think maybe all of us can relate to that when the busyness of life to take over but you're here and I'm here in a hot car but the windows are down that much and I'm listening out in case little footprints come but today or tonight depending when you're listening I want to follow up on a requested video I was asked to do a reading from Ephesians and it is my pleasure to do so. I actually really like getting your requests for Bible readings because the Bible readings, I, I do other ASMR videos, but the Bible readings I don't just do for the sake of doing, if you know what I mean. I want to be led by God's Spirit into what to read and how to read it, if that makes sense. And so, <laughs> when you request something from the Bible, it encourages me to go and look through it and maybe learn something new myself. And, and so you're actually, I feel that you're actually being used by God, being directed by His Spirit to direct me and 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 you and oh I'm not sure if I'm explaining that correctly sorry but I just appreciate it and I do enjoy doing other videos as well so do check them out um, um, but I do have a special soft spot for the Bible readings because God is just so good and I really have appreciated reading the lovely comments that you guys have been leaving for me it's so encouraging I've never really felt that I've been that useful <laughs> and it's just so encouraging to know that God can take this little thing that I'm offering and use it to bless others and it's so humbling and just amazing I'm, I'm gobsmacked at his goodness and being able to just use the tiniest of human beings that's me anyway i digress let's get on to ephesians now um, 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 it's the new testament just after galatians and I'll be reading from the Bible I usually read from, which is um, the Women's Devotional Bible, and it's the New International Version. I don't know, it's just a favourite version of mine because I find it easier to read. I like the gold, the gold gilt edges on the pages. I've had this particular Bible since two. 2003. It was given to me by a friend. And 
I've written in it, well not written, I've highlighted and underlined a few pages here. My pink pen and some pages with the highlighter. Do you do that? I find it helps me, um, I'm a kinesthetic type of learner and it helps me to remember something. Some things if I actually physically do something. But before we get into God's Word, as I like to do, I just like to ask if we can pray together first, if that's okay. Sparrows are very busy, they're praising God too. <laughs> and I can hear my cat's bell around his collar, he's out here somewhere. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the freedom to be able to open your word and to learn more about you, to catch a glimpse of you, to touch your cloak as it were. Thank you, thank you Lord, that you're not a distant God to us, but you're close. You live right in our hearts. And you speak to us and you want to speak to us daily through your word. And I do ask your blessing on what we read from Ephesians today, Lord. I ask that your Holy Spirit would direct us. That the thoughts that come to mind as we read your word would be directed by you, Lord. Lord, that you would bless each person that is listening to this. That you would bless them. They're not here by accident. Not one of, not one of you is here by accident. But Lord, you have a perfect plan for each and every one of us. Through trials and triumphs, you're with us. I thank you for the practical advice in this book of Ephesians. It's a, it's a go-to sort of book on Christian living. Thank you, Father. I pray for a blessing upon each one and pray for the person who is listening because they need help going to sleep. Lord, bring peace to their mind and to their heart and their lives that they may be able to rest in you in perfect peace, Lord. That in this moment they would know that absolutely nothing can harm them. For the anxious person, Lord, that they would know that while they are under the word of God, they're under your protection. Nothing can harm them at this moment. And I pray that you would relax them. I ask these things in the most holy, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now, as I mentioned, Paul was writing to the saints of Ephesians. And he writes a lot of um, advice, I guess you would say, life advice. And um, I think he encourages people to focus on him um, and how they should live. And it's not so much living a Christian life to make it better for God or for others. But I think it makes it better for us too if we can live according to the guidelines in here. Imagine if everybody did. Wow, what a wonderful world it would be. Okay, I've just put the window down a little bit better so you may hear some sounds of nature. Perhaps the occasional neighbour sneezing or lawns being mowed. 
I thought we would just have a little look at chapter 1 um, in Ephesians, where Paul has greeted the saints of Ephesus. And we'll start, perhaps we'll pick it up from verse 3 and just read through a little bit. read along with me if you've got your Bibles, but just listen if you just want to relax under God's Word. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. I love that word, lavished. God is so extravagant. Sorry, I got distracted there. I'm reminded of um, Bob Ross for some reason. Um, I initially learned about ASMR by watching Bob Ross videos to help me sleep and he used to paint a happy little cloud, happy little tree, they were all different, they were all beautiful and I I have such a great admiration for clouds. If you have ever been one of those kids who used to lie back on the grass and look up at the sky at the clouds and you'd see all the different shapes and different colours in the sky at the sunset. It's beautiful. And it just makes me think, yes, God is extravagant. He doesn't just say, I'll create the earth, the earth and I'll pop a cloud over here and a cloud over there. And he doesn't make them all uniform. He, he says, you know what? I'm going to make that cloud look like an elephant. <laughs> I'm going to make that cloud look like a fish. <laughs> I'm going to make that one look like a castle and I'm going to do it for this little wee girl here who's lying back on the grass admiring my work. I just love that word lavish. He lavishes us with extravagance, with wisdom and understanding, with beauty in the nature around us. God is very extravagant. Sorry, I digressed. <laughs> so in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. Okay, he predestined. We were chosen and he predestined us. If you're listening to this, it's not coincidence. It's part of God's plan. That's how special you are. 
that he chose you, he chose me. Of all people, he chose me. That just amazes me. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Well, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? I mean, we're using very definite words here. Guaranteeing. Guaranteed inheritance. Wow. That the Holy Spirit is like a deposit. If you've ever bought a house or, or rented a home and you have to pay that deposit first to secure your place, to secure your home. The Holy Spirit is our deposit that guarantees our place in our heavenly home. I've had a couple of interruptions. A little girl has come looking for me. She's worried I'm going to drive away. Right, I think we'll carry on now from chapter 3. And I'll just touch on a few verses. I think we'll pick it up from verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Wow. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. <laughs> we cannot imagine the depth, the height of God's love. It's beyond our understanding. That's mind-blowing, really. It surpasses knowledge. Wow. Again, I love Paul's description of God's love. He's, he's being superlative, almost. It's like he's trying to say that it's beyond any little box that we can confine it into. His love is infinite. This, this is the same God who formed all the planets and galaxies. And yet, he formed the very core of our beings and loves us like each individual. Sometimes we look out at the stars and space and we feel so small, so insignificant. The earth is just like a speck of dust in the sun's ray. In fact, I think, was it the Hubble telescope that took that photo? And yet, the miracle of a human life being formed, the very core of our beings, so carefully planned. That's the depth of his love for us, for each individual, his love for you. Be encouraged. You are loved. I am loved. And I know what it's like to feel unloved. 
but I will never know what it's like to be unloved. So don't let your feelings lie to your heart because you and me, we are loved beyond all measure. We have worth, value, because we are cherished. Amazing. Chapters 4 and 5, again, they're very much um, guidelines for Christian living. You know, how wives should treat husbands, children, and parents. Um, it actually gives two sides of the story. You know, we think, oh, you know, wives must obey their husbands, and we think that's a little bit goes against the grain in today's culture. But it also gives the flip side, husbands, how they should be treating their wives. And again, with children, obey your parents. But at the same time, it tells parents not to exasperate your children. You see, it's very balanced. You know, I've just heard another interruption. <laughs> Same little girl, three times now. And it's quite funny because, although I'm not highly amused with the interruptions, I have noticed that each Bible reading and Bible study I have done, I have had things go wrong. It's almost as if <laughs> someone is trying to tempt me to just say, you know what, too much trouble, I won't bother. But I think it's worth persevering, don't you? Because I'm not going to let the enemy get in the way of sharing God's word. So we will press on. Whether or not we get interrupted or not, who knows, but we're getting there. So we're going to continue from Ephesians chapter 6, starting from verse 10. Very famous passage, the armour of God. Mm. So here's some very strong advice. For daily living. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Hmm. Does that sound easy to do, I wonder? It's something most of us probably were taught in Sunday school if we went to Sunday school. It's very basic, put on your armour every day, and we see all these pictures in Sunday school lessons, put on your armour every day, but you know, I'm going to be truthful with you, I'm going to be brutally honest, how many of us really do consciously put on our heavenly armour, and I will admit to you, 
some mornings, most mornings, I get out of bed and I'm thrown straight into the thick of it with these children. One of my children has um, complex needs. I may talk about that at another time. And the day starts very early and it starts very busy and very full on. And so putting on this armour, although it's a nice concept, sometimes things just slip on by. So how? How do we do this in our little human world where we're just not capable? How do we do this? Because my soul wants to do it. I want to do it. And I think I found a clue. I think I found a clue in Romans. And if you've ever followed Corrie Ten Boom, um, you remember she was the marvellous woman who, with her family, helped Jews escape from the Nazis during the Nazi occupation of World War II in Holland and she herself went to Auschwitz and she quoted this verse in relation to forgiveness when she met um, one of the guards, one of the Nazi guards at a church service many, many years later and she could not forgive this man and so she needed guidance on how to do that in her human way. And much like putting on God's armour and living a godly life in my own human way, I can't do this stuff. I'm just too weak. And so this verse really speaks to me. You see, I've highlighted it. Can you guess what it is? comes from Romans chapter 5 verse 5 and here it is continuing in verse 5 God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit and so by the Holy Spirit Corrie was able to ask for help in forgiving the soldier Spirit. We can ask anything that we are too weak to do. And we've been reading about, about this. I pray out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. The Holy Spirit, our companion, he is the one who is able to help us do this, to enable us. So we ask him, Holy Spirit, help me to put on my armor. Oh, Holy Spirit, my feet. I don't think I had my shoes on ready to share the gospel today. Holy Spirit, help me in some way to do that. Oh, Holy Spirit. I feel like I'm being attacked. Please give me that shield of faith. Stand between me and the enemy. All things are possible, you see. We don't have to be perfect. Because we are just humans living in a, a world that has been contaminated. But God has given us a toolbox. And God has given us himself. He's given us his spirit. We're not alone. So I will finish with the final verse of Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 23. Peace to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Undying love. And so, peace and grace to you. Bless you.